Hello and welcome. This is one of those formulas you really need to understand if you're getting into quant finance. Geometric Brownian motion, GBM, is the foundation behind stock price simulation, option pricing, risk modeling, everything. You will see it in textbooks, in quant interviews, and inside the models that actually move money. In this video, I'm not going to waste your time with a full derivation. That's not the point. What I am going to do is walk you through the GBM formula in detail and explain exactly what each part means. We will cover drift, volatility, randomness, exponential growth and why this thing looks the way it does. And by the end, you will not only understand the formula, you will be able to simulate it yourself using Python and real stock data, just like what you are seeing here on my screen. So let's get into it. All right, let's get started with the formula. This is how geometric Brownian motion model stock price changes. Looks a bit cryptic in the first place, but let me give you some context and this will make sense to you 100%. If not, I hate my job, so kindly let me know below. This whole expression gives us the simulated stock price at the next small time step. Could be for instance tomorrow based on the current price ST. So let's go through every single part in this equation so you get a crystal clear understanding of what exactly this is doing. Starting with ST. ST is the most straightforward one. That's just today's stock price. That is the starting point. Then you multiply that with an exponential because stock prices change by percentages, not fixed amounts. So a 5% move on 100 US dollars is not the same as 5% on 10 US dollars. Also, this guarantees the price stays positive, which makes sense in reality. Have you ever seen a negative stock price? I haven't so far. Now, let's get to this part. Mu delta T. I'm skipping this for a second. I get to it in a couple of seconds. But for now, mu delta T, what's that? This is the expected return, how much we think the stock grows or shrinks per year. Since we are simulating one small step, like a day, we scale it by delta t, which is usually 1 divided by 252, because that's the number of trading days for stocks, also for commodities. But for crypto, it would be 1 divided by 365, right? So this is just 1 divided by the number of trading days. Now, this part is a correction term. This is called the Ito correction. Here is why it's needed in a nutshell. Because mathematically, this is slightly more complex, but take this for now to understand why I'm correcting the expected return. If you exponentiate a normal random variable, the expected value gets inflated. Mathematically, it gets inflated by one and a half of sigma squared. So you just subtract that to cancel out this upward bias. This simply ensures that the average return of the model really equals mu. Now, this is this part. This part, which you're adding on top, is adding the randomness. So Z is a random number from a standard normal distribution. Sigma is volatility, just how much the stock tends to move. Square root of delta T scales the shock to the size of the time step. This term makes each price path look different. It's what introduces uncertainty. Now to put it all together to recap, the full formula takes the current price and applies a mix of expected return, a correction to keep the average right, the ETO correction, and a random shock, all inside an exponential to model compounding returns realistically. Last but not least, let's take a quick look at the Python code so you can run GBM stock price simulations or asset price simulations yourself. Starting off with a couple of libraries you're going to need 
NumPy you need for adding randomness and also for matrix operations, PyPlot to plot, Y finance to pull asset prices from the internet, and pandas for data handling. Then I'm defining a couple of parameters here. So the first one is obvious. I'm taking a look at the Apple stock price. You can pick whatever asset you're interested in here. Then the days for estimation is simply the look back period. So I'm considering the last year of the Apple price history here. So 252 trading days. If you wanna consider more price history, you have to extend that accordingly. This is just the future years to simulate. So I'm just going one year into the future. If you just want to go, I don't know, three months, that this would be 0.25 and so on, right? Half a year would be 0.5, two years, two and, and so on. You get the point, I think. Then just the number of simulations. So this is the number of path you want to generate. So one equation here is one path. So you are simulating this 100 times if you define that as 100 here. Next one is just downloading prices. So you just pass the Apple stock ticker here and then you go back 252 trading days. You pick the one day interval and then you take a look at the close price, which is effectively with the new change in the Y Finance library, the adjusted close price. Then super straightforward, you calculate log returns. You need log returns for GBM. It models log returns. So you need to calculate them super straightforward. You just take the change and then take the log of the change here and dropping off NANs as the first row will contain NAN values. Then you model everything you need for GBM. So mu or mu or what, whatever it's called. You just take the mean, annualize it. And this dot item is just pulling out the value. So background is this is a technical pandas thing. If you pull the mean on log returns, you will get a so-called series with item, you just pull the value out of the series. Nothing more than that. Sigma, same story, just the standard deviation times the square root of the number of trading days here. Then again, pull the actual value. And S0 is simple, simply the stock price initially. So that is the last available stock price here. So you just index for the last item in the prices list, and then you pull that value. So that is the most recent Apple stock price. DT, you remember that from the formula above. This is just one divided by 252. That is fixed. So one step is always one divided by 252. And the number of steps, that is just to make things simple. That is just the number of days to simulate. So if that would be one year, this is simply 252. If that is two years, this is simply 252 times two. But if that is one month, that would be 252 divided by 12 and so on, right? So with that, you're just standardizing the number of steps. Nothing more than that. You make your life easier by doing that. Otherwise you would have to amend all the stuff when changing the future years to simulate. Next one, Z, that is the random term. And as you see, you're utilizing NumPy here. You pull the standard normal uh, distribution of two things here and you pass the number of steps because you wanna have one per step and you wanna have one per simulation. So you pull a matrix of standard normal random values, one per step and one per simulation. Then, you calculate the daily factors and that is simply this term. So that is EXP, then you pass the expected return mu minus E to correction times delta T plus sigma times square root of delta T times Z. So you already know that we went through that in detail. That's just the factors. So why factors? Because in the end, you take the most recent price and this is the factor you have to multiply it. And this is exactly what this next path part here is doing. So you generate price path by simply creating an empty matrix. So a matrix full of zeros and you pass the number of steps plus one and then the number of simulations. And with that, you are getting a price path matrix and set 
the first row of this matrix to S0, which is the initial stock price. So if let's say the 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 the, the last available stock price is 150 US dollars, the first row contains 150 US dollars, and on this value you apply then the daily factors. And then you have the second row, let's say this is uh, 160, and then you apply the uh, um, daily factors on the second row, on this 160 again. So on every step, you do it again with the new amended price here, right? And this is exactly what is going to happen here. So you see you loop starting at one to skip the very first row here, and then number of steps plus one to add another step. And then you say in this row, so let's take the first row. Imagine the first row. Let me actually pull that. It's basically way easier to understand probably. Yeah, it's in a pretty bad format, but I think it's worth it to quickly show how this is looking like. So you see this is the most recent stock price here of Apple. Is that actually the case? Give me a second. Some prices. So this is the most recent stock price for Apple, right? 2.11.1799. And you have the first row now, right? This is your simulation. So this is how the metric is looking like. So obviously you have like uh, 100 columns here as we have 100 simulation path. And then you start at the initial price and then you apply the daily factors. So you apply the daily factors here on this row so the loop starts, so this one here, starts as at the second row here, because you start in range one, and then you jump back one row here to apply the daily factors on this row and fill this row with that, nothing more than that. And this is happening in every single row, right? Then this row is pulled and the daily factors are applied on this value, then you fill this row and so on. It's just a loop going through every of those uh, columns here and if it's applying the daily factors on every new generated price here. So this is super effective, so it's super, super, um, super nicely because it's, 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 it's leveraging vectorization here. And then in the end, you're getting simulated price path and this is what this whole plot is doing, right? So I'm not going into details here. You just plot the historical dates to just get the Apple stock price history, that's super straightforward. You just pass the historical dates. And then you pull the last price, so price index minus one again, the last available price. And then you generate the future dates starting from the last historical date on. So you pass the uh, future days here, so the number of steps as periods. And with that, you're just getting a range of future dates. And this is what this, uh, Access here is showing, and then this, these are the generated price path here. So do it for yourself, play with around with that. And yeah, thanks for watching and looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Cheers, bye, bye.